Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the glycolysis pathway of the glucose metabolism. Now first of all, uh, this glucose metabolism pathway or glycolysis pathway is also known as the EMP. M10 Meyerhoff pathway as the name of the scientist who discovered this. Now first of all, 6 carbon atom glucose in this glycolysis as the name is glyco that means glucose and lysis means the breakdown so means the glucose the 6 carbon atom glucose breaks down under aerobic condition and forms 2 3 carbon pyruvic acid under aerobic condition it forms 2 molecules of 3 carbon pyruvic acid while under anaerobic condition this pyruvic acid will get into lactic acid under strenuous exercise or the anaerobic condition now the main site of this glycolysis pathway is the uh, cytoplasm of all the cells of the human body almost all the cells this glycolysis pathway occurs now the significance of the glycolysis this is the only pathway which actually occurs in all the almost all the cells of the body and it is the main source of energy in the RBC or the erythrocyte. Now during the strenuous exercise, this pathway is the only way to get to get uh, energy because during the exercise there is less amount of oxygen available in the body. So with the help of this anaerobic uh, pathway, the pyruvic acid is converted into lactic acid and energy is derived because at the end of this, some of the energy is also uh, uh, derived by this process. Now. It also provides carbon carrying for some of the non-essential amino acid and glycerol. And uh, one more important thing is that it is a primarily step before completion of the glucose oxidation. Complete oxidation of the glucose uh, is done and it is the main primary step for the complete oxidation of the glucose. Complete oxidation of the glucose is very important for its complete usage. And if this glycolysis pathway actually gone into reverse process, means if there is formation of the glucose in spite of lysis or the breakdown of it, it is known as a gluconeogenesis. So uh, differentiate between these two, glycolysis and the gluconeogenesis. Glycolysis is the breakdown of the glucose and gluconeogenesis is the uh, formation or the making up of the glu uh, glucose. Now how does glucose actually enters into the cell? Okay, we have discussed about this in my previous video of uh, me uh, metabolism of the carbohydrate of the carbohydrate in which i told you that glut 4 is very important type of uh, glucose transport of which, which is actually present inside in the intracellular in the intracellular part or the intracellular membrane and it is mainly present in the skeletal muscle and the adipocytes now this glut 4 which is present intracellular it will actually under the influence of the uh, insulin will actually come uh, act, will come at the outer membrane of the uh, skeletal muscle cell and it will up and it will take the uh, glucose from the blood so it will take the glucose excess glu glucose from the blood under the influence of the insulin and will take that blood and will uh, store it inside the muscle and adipocyte tissues now this is mainly done in the good for is mainly present in the uh, skeletal muscles and uh, adipocytes well the glut 2 is the transporter in the liver cell is not and insulin dependent transporter just remember glut 4 is important because it is insulin dependent while glut 2 is important because it is not insulin dependent and present in the liver cells hence we can say that insulin favors the uptake and the utilization of the glucose by muscle cell adipocyte and, and other peripheral tissues Okay, now let's start with the glycolysis pathway. It has mainly 10 steps involved out of which just remember 1st, 3rd and 9th. These 3 are the irreversible, rest all are the reversible. Now first of all step 1. In this the glucose along with ATP, okay, in the path of hexokinase enzyme and magnesium will come into glucose 6-phosphate. One ATP, uh, 1 ATP and the phosphate of that will come into 6th position of the glucose, 6 carbon atom and convert to glucose 6-phosphate, enzyme hexokinase. Now step 2. Now in this step 2, uh, the glucose 6-phosphate is actually isomerized in the presence of phosphohexoisomerase. Okay, phosphohexoisomerase. Just remember the name of the name of the enzyme in most of the reactions will be based on the name of the substrate only. So phospho, hexose means glucose and isomerase means the reaction. Isomerase generally occur in the place of manganese we convert into fructose 6-phosphate. Now the step 3. In this fructose 6-phosphate in the presence of phosphofructokinase 1. As, you, as the name says phosphate, fructose and kinase. Kinase means phosphate group. 
So first for fructokinase one. So you can remember the names of the enzyme by the name of the substrate and the reaction only. Kinase one, remember one ATP will convert into phosphor phosphate fructose six phosphate to fructose one six biphosphate. Now step four. Now up to step three means this first, second, and third step all together are known as the preparatory step of the glycolysis. Just remember this. Now the step four we are going to do step four and step four a. In the step four, the fructose one six biphosphate in the presence of aldolase will convert into two substances: DHAP dihydroxyacetone phosphate and the glyceraldehyde three phosphate. But for glycolysis, we only need glyceraldehyde three phosphate. So by the step four a reaction, that means in this, what will happen? The phosphotriose isomerase enzyme will actually act and will convert this DHAP into glyceraldehyde three phosphate only. So in short, at the end of step four a and step four, means after this step, we will get two molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Now this step together means step four and step four a is also known as the uh, splitting phase of the glycolysis. Now step five. Step five is also known as the NADPH production phase. Over here, what happens is two glyceraldehyde three phosphate will form in the this uh, two molecules of this is form in the four reaction, right? So this two react two phos two glyceraldehyde three phosphate will undergo dehydrogenation reaction in the presence of glyceraldehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase. I told you before only. Just remember the name of the substrate. You will be easily able to remember the name of the enzyme. And then the reaction, you know. So this will be a three phosphate dehydrogenase. So it will form one comma three BPG, two molecules of one comma three biphosphoglycerate. Okay, biphosphoglycerate. Now the step sixth. Now the step step sixth is actually over here is also known as the ATP production phase. Over here the two molecules of one comma three biphosphoglycerate or BPG in the presence of phosphoglycerokinase. As again name says phosphoglycerokinase means ATP. So over here two molecules of ATP will be formed, and we will get three phosphoglycerate, three phosphoglycerate. So phosphate group from the first position will be removed, and the ATP is obtained. So step six is also known as the substrate level phosphorylation phase. Okay, why? Because from the substrate only, without without going into the uh, electron chain reaction, electron transport chain reaction, the this substrate is actually giving us the energy or is trapping the energy without going into ETS or the electron transport chain reaction, right? So that's why uh, this step six is also known as the substrate level phosphorylation one. Okay, the step nine is also the same only production of ATP. So step six is known as the substrate level phosphorylation one. Step nine is the substrate level phosphorylation two phase. So over here, remember one comma three biphosphoglycerate converted into three phosphoglycerate. Now step seven. Now in this, the three phosphoglycerate is actually mutation over here occurs, and the phosphoglyceromutase enzyme will act, and over here we will get. Two phosphoglycerate, two molecules of two phosphoglycerate. Now, eighth step, two phosphoglycerate. It was of enolase enzyme. Enolase enzyme actually released one, releases one molecule of water and will form PEP, phosphenol pyruvate or phosphenol pyruvic acid. Okay, two phosphoglycerate. One molecule of water will be removed in the presence of enolase. In the presence of magnesium, coming into PEP. Now over here, just remember one thing: if uh, this this magnesium actually helps to go the reaction in the forward direction, but if fluoride is added in this reaction, so what will happen? It will inhibit the activity of the magnesium. Okay, and that's why at the end the glucose is not meta is not actually break down. So this. This clinical thing is actually used while doing any kind of glucose test. Okay, for for testing glucose level in the patient. Okay, what happens is they will take the glucose. So they will take the blood of the patient and will and it will they will keep it into a test in, a, in into a test tube which is having fluoride powder in it. So that fluoride powder will actually inhibit the activity of the magnesium and so the blood glucose level is shown normal or the correct value. If they will not do so. The fluoride, the magnesium will actually make this uh, reaction go in the forward direction. That means breaking of the glucose, and the glucose level will show less as compared to the real blood glucose level.
okay so this reaction is very important now the step 9 step 9 is also the atp production phase and the irreversible phase in this the pep first phenol pyruvate in the presence of pyruvate kinase will form two atps and two pyruvic acid this is the second substrate level phosphorylation reaction first was sixth step and second is the ninth step last step 10th in this the anaerobic reaction mainly occurs in which the pyruvic acid actually converted into lactic acid it will reduce to lactic acid in the presence of lactate dehydrogenase enzyme okay we'll talk about this uh, in detail for the in 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 this video only just remember this that this ldh lactic dehydrogenase is actually a five isoenzyme complex and the cardiac isoenzyme of ldh will be increased in the myocardial infarction so ldh will be five isoenzymes while the cardiac isoenzyme of this will increase in the cardiac or the myocardial infarction okay now after this the pyruvic acid which will form in the step 9 position up to step 9 is the oxidative and 10th one is the anaerobic so up to 9 the whatever the pyruvic acid is formed it will enter into the citric acid cycle for complete oxidation of the glucose while the lactic acid which will form which is formed in the 10th step actually will enter into the core cycle we'll talk about these both cycle in detail in our further videos now let's discuss about the whole again glucose glucose 6-phosphate fructose 6-phosphate glucose sorry, fructose 1,6-biphosphate then splitting DHAP GAP then uh, formation of 2 GAP disaldehyde 3 phosphate then 1 phosphate 1 comma 3 BPG 3 phosphoglycerate 2 phosphoglycerate PEP pyruvic acid and then if stress excess is present then lactic acid now let's talk about this in detail significance of lactic acid production now in this reaction the step 5th and 10th step 5th was the production of the NADPH and the step 10th is the anaerobic step of the glycolysis pathway so this both are coupled now if you remember in the 5th part as you can see over here the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate converted into 1,5 biphospho means 1,3 BPG right in presence of this enzyme now in this what happens if I if you remember in the fifth one the NAD is converted into NADPH but this NAD coenzyme is actually limited in the body so that's why this fifth reaction is or the fifth step is also the bottleneck step of this if the NAD NAD this NAD coenzyme is present limited okay or if it is present enough then only the further reaction will occur if the NAD is not present then this further reaction will not occur that's why this step 5 is also known as the bottleneck reaction of the glycolysis so NAD is a coenzyme present, present limited in the body now what happens is for, for for smooth operation of the pathway further NADPH is to be reconverted to NAD this NADPH should be reconverted to NAD for further continuation because we need this NAD this can be done by oxidative phosphorylation but in strenuous exercise what happens what, what happens is this reaction is NAD H to NAD is not able to convert because we need this NAD for further reaction because this is the bottle like reaction. So uh, for further NAD formation we need oxygen. Okay but in strenuous exercise when, when you are doing a lot of exercise oxygen is less in the body. So anaerobic reaction will occur and there is lack of the oxygen because of this. So conversion of uh, means oxygenation of the NADH to NAD is not possible. So what will happen is the NAD this will go anaerobic reaction and the cell has to couple some of the other reaction in which the NAD is converted into NAD plus. So as you can see we just have the assumption that this fifth and the step tenth are coupled. Okay so just imagine that how these both are coupled means this fifth will again go into sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And then from the, when it will form pyruvate, okay, it will go in the 10th reaction. Then the 10th reaction will again form, uh, will you, uh, over here the LDH is an, uh, actually having 5 isoenzymes, right? So this, this enzyme will actually convert the NADH to NAD+. So now whatever the NAD+, is formed, will, will go back again into the, directly into the 5th. It will not go further, it will not go in the starting of the reaction, it will go directly into the 5th one. And will again form this because over here oxygen is less and so the oxygenation of NADH is not possible. So that's why it, this is the anaerobic reaction which has to be done during the strenuous exercise. I am telling you again 
this fifth reaction in this NAD is going to NADH but we need NAD further for uh, smooth passage of this reaction but in our body limited amount of NAD is present so of course we need to reconvert this NADH formed in step fifth to NAD again and this can be done only by the oxygenation reaction but during this tennis exercise this cannot be done so fifth and the tenth couple and the tenth step are coupled in this reaction in this step and so during the exercise this aerobic anaerobic and aerobic they both are mixed and they will uh, further form the energy for the exercise right this is a very important reaction during the exercise purpose now last and a very important uh, question in viva also in normal exam also the energy yield for the from the glycolysis pathway now it was having two processes aerobic and anaerobic now in anaerobic first of all if you remember from the hexokinase phosphofructokinase in the first and third step 1 1 ATP were used ok so minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 and in 6 and 9 I told you in 6 and 9 are known as substrate level phosphorylation ok where, where the production of the energy is produced by the substrate only so this they will form two molecules of ATP because they were having two molecules of xaldehyde 3 phosphate so they will go undergo their respective pathway and will form two and two four ATPs so four minus two so in the anaerobic reaction remember two ATPs are formed at the end okay two ATPs are formed now we might be thinking thinking that we were having NADH formation also but I told you before only that this NADH is further used in the cycle process in the anaerobic reaction. So just remember NADH production will not be further used in the anaerobic reaction because NADH and NAD they all are used in the reaction itself. So they won't be yielding any energy at the end. But in the aerobic this NADH will give us some amount of energy also. So first of all again this 1 and 3 minus 1 minus 1. Well, the fifth was forming one molecule of NADH. Sorry, two molecules of NADH. So one molecule forms 2.5 ATP. So this will form 5. Then again 6, 2, 2. It will form total 7 ATP. Okay, so this was the ATP formed in the glycolysis only. Glycolysis is not the end. Okay, after this the pyruvic acid formed at the ninth steps end. It will enter into the citric acid cycle while the while the lactic acid will enter into the Cori cycle. So at the end of the complete oxidation of the glucose, we will be having net 32 ATPs at the end of the citric acid cycle. So this was all about the glycolysis reaction or glycolysis path of the glucose. Hope you enjoyed well. Thank you so much.